Hello, in this lecture we're going to look at the Master Budget Part 6, Budgeted Balance Sheet. If you haven't taken a look at the other five, you might want to take a look at those first because we will be using components of those in order to compile the balance sheet. At the end of this, we will be able to list components of the Master Budget and compile the Budgeted Balance Sheet. This is going to be the components here. We started with the Sales Budget. We need to do it in this order. Sales Budget. Then we have the Production Budget. And then the production budget will be used to make the direct materials budget, the direct labor budget, the overhead budget, as well as the capital expenditures budget, the selling and administrative budget. Then we're going to have the cash budget. Then we can put together the statements, the balance sheet budget, and the budgeted income statement, as well as the cash flow. We also had some other worksheets in order to calculate the income statement. We wanted to calculate the cost of goods sold. And in order to do that, we needed to have the cost of goods uh, manufactured. So that's going to be the process that we're going through in this case. And this one, we're going to focus in on the balance sheet, putting a lot of the stuff together in terms of the balance sheet. Remember when we think about the budget, we often think about the income statement, how we're gonna perform over time. The balance sheet is gonna be where we are at as of the end of that point in time. Where, where are we gonna be standing once the budget time period is over in terms of a balance sheet perspective. All right, so we've done this so far. We've already done the sales budget. That's number one, step one we did. Step two, we used that to do the production budget. Then we had the raw materials budget, the direct materials budget, and then the factory overhead budget, the selling expense budget, the general and administrative expense budget. We used that to create the cash budget here, and then the uh, budgeted cost of goods manufactured so that we can get the cost of goods manufactured number that we would then use to calculate the cost of goods sold number. We used that to then calculate the income statement. So we've done all that so far. We're going to bounce back and forth to some of these items in order to use them to create the balance sheet. The point we are at at the end of the time period, of course. So balance sheet at the end of our budgeted time period. Where do we stand after this time period that we are budgeting for this quarter is ended? That's what we're looking at. We're going to have the assets will be the current assets. We're going to start off with cash. Cash will be uh coming from the cash budget so cash budget we have the forty thousand. that's where this forty thousand is here don't confuse that with the forty thousand at the beginning of last time's balance sheet so this is the balance sheet uh last uh, the at the end of last period which is of course the beginning numbers for this period the reason it's the same is because remember that's our minimum balance so it happens to be that we needed to take out a loan to get to forty thousand and because that's our minimum balance so don't get confused that that's the same 40 it's not the same 40 uh this is the beginning 40 this is the ending 40 the reason they're the same is because we made it the same in order to keep our minimum balance at 40 by taking out a loan in this case the loan at the end for that 8160. all right then we got the accounts receivable we're gonna have to do a bit of a calculation to figure out what the ending balance in the accounts receivable is so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the beginning receivable which is going to come from last time's uh, accounts receivable. So we had the balance sheet as of the end of last period, which is, of course, the beginning of this period at uh, 342, 248. That's where we start. And then we're going to add to that the credit sales. So we're going to have to figure out what the credit sales are. A problem is going to have to give you that. In real life, we're going to have to, of course, estimate that. In this case, the problem said that we have 1,447,200 in sales given by the sales budget here so here's the sales budget giving us this number here and we said that 70 percent of that the problem said was going to be on account therefore those are sales that are going to increase accounts receivable so here's where accounts receivable started then we had the sales on account increase in the receivable and then we have the cash collections from credit sales so we had to figure that out and we've done that in the past. We did that on the total cash receipts from customers calculation here. And so if we add these up, that's what we received in terms of cash. So of course that's gonna be what's reducing the accounts receivable. So if we take this and make it a bit larger like this, we're gonna say that the 342248 plus 346080 plus 329280 is gonna give us this uh, 1,017,608. And then if we do the calculation, we started off with 342248, people owing us money, plus 1013040. That's what increased accounts receivable. Those are the sales on account, minus what people paid us. 
which was 101,708. And that should give us the ending balance of 337,680. 337,680. That's our ending receivable. So we got to go through a bit of a calculation to get that. That's where we're going to be at here on our balance sheet. There's the ending receivable. Next item, raw materials. We're going to take that from step three in our budget, which is the raw materials budget. And we're going to take the ending balance in terms of units here and multiply it times the 21 uh, per unit price. And that will give us our ending balance of the 84,000 in this case. So remember, what we're looking at is where we stand as of the end of the time period. That's what the balance sheet is in terms of the bud budget of balance sheet. So we're going to take our ending uh, amount here. That's what we're going to have on the balance sheet at the end of the time period. Then we've got the finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory, we could take from the uh, cost of goods sold calculation where we have here. And this is going to be, have to be something that's given in the problem. It's going to have to be something that we will estimate in uh, real life. What's going to be in the ending finished goods inventory. And then if we add up the total current assets, then we can take out the calculator here. And that would be the 40,000 plus the 337680 plus the 8400 plus the 321360 gives us the 783040 that's our total current assets then we're going to have the equipment we're going to look in this is a property plant and equipment we can get that from the prior times equipment we had 600,000 then we have to look for the stuff that was added or taken away in this problem the only thing happened was equipment that was added it was all for cash that's why i'm looking at the cash budget in order to get that if we financed it and whatnot, we'd have to think about find how much equipment we uh, had purchased, whether it was financed or not. In this case, we had the 600,000. We had one purchase through this time period for cash of the, of the 130. Uh, that gives us the total equipment, 730,000. Then we have the accumulated depreciation, the stuff we're going to reduce the equipment by. Once again, we're going to take the balance sheet from the last period. So last period's uh, balance sheet had accumulated depreciation. 150,000 and we have the budgeted uh, overhead budget gave us 21,000 a month or 63,000 on the quarter so the 150,000 plus the 63,000 in accumulated depreciation gives us this 213,000 so then if we take the uh, 730,000 minus the 213,000 we have a book value of the equipment of uh, 517,000 then we're going to have the total assets total assets being the outer column so the outer column of current assets 78340 plus the 517 gives us the one million three hundred thousand forty dollars then we have the liabilities and equity we're going to move on to starting with the current liabilities first one being accounts payable we're going to go through a similar calculation that we did with the receivable in order to figure out what is in there now, this is going to be a bit more simplified because of the way this particular problem was set up. We're basically left with, in the receivable, this number here, the September. And, but let's go through the calculation a bit in the long way just so we can see how this calculation would work and how you could see it applied to a different type of setup. In this setup, we're saying that we're going to purchase everything on account and then pay for everything the following month. So if we think about this, we're going to say, okay, then that means that there's 200500 That's what we started off in accounts payable. That's what was in there at the end of last month. That's what's in there at the beginning of this month. And then we're going to say, okay, then we had purchases of raw materials. Remember, the assumption is that we purchased all of it on account. So we purchased everything on account. In this case, for the entire month, we purchased 611474 all of it on account. So that would increase the accounts payable. Then we have to think about how much payments for raw material. How much did we pay? And the assumption is that we pay uh, the month following. We pay for the full previous month, the month following. <laughs> so that means that the amount we paid uh, in in August, we paid the two hundred thousand five, and then uh, in September, sorry, in July, we paid the two hundred thousand five that we that we purchased the month before, and then. Uh, and then in August, we paid the 207. And then in September, we paid this 212 for the purchases. That leaves us then, of course, with this number. 
So if we add up the 200,005 plus the 207, 224 plus the 212, 625, we've come up with the 191. Uh, I'm sorry, we come up with the 62349. And if we then say, let's take out the calculator and actually do the calculation here. So then if we take the 200,500 we started with plus the 611474 minus uh what we paid 620 349 we're going to end up with the 191 625 here and of course that is the purchases that we made in september so that's why this one happened to wind up of course the purchases that we are left in september because we're going to pay them all off in the following month all right so if we pull that over there's the 191 625 here next we have the short-term loan payable 8160 that remember we're going to take from our cash flow statement because that loan is fluctuating it's kind of like a line of credit we needed that in order to get to our minimum balance of this forty thousand in cash and then we have the income tax payable that's going to come from the income statement so that's going to be down here on the income statement we had to calculate the income tax payable that is what's going to be owed for income taxes on the balance sheet at the end of this time period then we have the uh, total current liabilities that's going to be of course this number plus this number plus this number will give us the total current liabilities then we have the long term note payable that doesn't change according in this particular problem that was the 500,000 at the beginning of the time frame we're paying off interest only during this time period during this quarter therefore the principal does not go down so we're still at the 500,000 and now we're going to move to the equity section where we're going to have the retained earnings. So we'll do the calculation for retained earnings, which will be the beginning retained earnings, which we will get from the last time's uh, balance sheet. So last period's balance sheet, ending retained earnings for last period's, beginning retained earnings for this period. We're going to add to that the net income, which we will, of course, get from the income statement. So there's income. We're going to add that to the retained earnings. Then we're going to subtract that from that, the dividends that we paid out. Now we recorded this in the statement of uh, cash uh, in in the cash budget, so uh, but I won't go back there. So that's where that ten thousand is coming from. We budgeted the amount that we're going to pay out, and that will give us the retained earnings. So we've got the two hundred eight seven eighty eight plus the income forty three two hundred four minus the ten thousand dividends gives us the ending retained earnings of two forty one nine nine two, and that's going to be this item here. Then we're going to have the total stockholders' equity, which will be the 335,000 plus the 241,992, gives us the 576,992. And if we then add up the total liabilities and equity, here's the current uh, liabilities plus the note plus the total equity. So these three are adding up to the 576,009. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> these three adding up to the 1,300,040. And of course, the total liabilities and equity will then equal the total assets. And so we are in balance in our budgeted balance sheet.